This is your first assignment. Every assignment for this class will be in two parts. The first part will always reflect a conceptual approach. That is, what were you thinking and how did you follow through? Any questions reference the critical thinking presentation. I must also warn you that you will not be given credit for the second or final portion of any assignment without doing the conceptual part first. That is the way that all of the assignments in this course are constructed. In short, turn in the finished design with no conceptual sketches and you might just as well have not done anything to begin with. Why is the conceptual stage so terribly important, you ask? Well, I suggest that you watch the video presentation that I've placed here on Canvas entitled, Does a Graphic Designer Need Drawing Skills? I'm not doing this to torture you. I'm doing this in order to make you think before you act. And the presenter makes very clear the clients and employers like to be involved in the design process, so you will need to hone your drawing and sketching abilities if you plan to get a job as a graphic designer. Now, a computer is just a tool like a triangle and a straight edge or a pencil. It will not make your design great simply because you used it any more than any of the previously mentioned tools. The beauty of a design, the novelty of it, that comes from inside of you. Okay, with that out of the way, our first assignment is going to be on the first element of design. It is one that is not mentioned in the presentation on the elements of design, and that is the element of point. Every presentation concerning the element of design always begins with the concept of line, but a line could not exist without two points, one at either end. In Euclidean geometry, the shortest distance between two points is referred to as a straight line. So you can see, no points, no line. This is a point. Your task is to make use out of it in a design. There are several ways to do this. One way is to create texture, change the focal point or the hierarchy, and alter the color or value of the point. But there is another way, and one that I want you to try. You are going to change the scale of the point in order to change a high-profile picture into a graphic image. So, let's say that the first point was half an inch in diameter. If I introduce another at approximately twice the size, it would be one inch in diameter. Are two points going to be enough to create a design from? Probably not. Let's introduce a third point, three times the size of the first one. This point is then an inch and a half in diameter. Now we're beginning to create some movement. If I now introduce a fourth point that is four times the size of the first one, we now have one that is two inches in diameter. However, in order to accomplish what I want you to do next, we may need a couple of more. But before we do that, we will need to take out our camera and take some photos. These are some images of some students that I had a couple of years back. I took close-up images of each of them. By holding a tensor lamp up very close to one side of their face, I was able to get a high degree of contrast in the color image. One side of their face was very brightly illuminated, while the other one is somewhat in shadow. You can more effectively do this in a darkened room with an intense light source up close to the side of your face but you have to do some trial and error shots with your camera or photo first in order to work out the details. I then had them convert these images into black and white and then mess with the brightness and contrast in Photoshop. Then I had them convert the image to a standard square format. I had them do this as a 12 inch square. The dimensions will make some sense here in a moment. The object is to take out all the gradient in the image, leaving behind only a high contrast image like this, but to do so with points. The first part of this assignment is done using tracing paper or tissue paper, something that you can readily see through. Then, using a blue colored pencil, I had them draw on a grid over the tracing paper atop their photograph. This grid will be used to assign a scale point to each location on the grid. 
This will first be done on the tracing paper and then later used as a template to go by to translate that information into Illustrator for the final rendition. Using the simple four-point size demonstration, each one of the grid squares was going to be assigned a point of a different size based on the value of the amount of light shown through that particular square. Dark squares got assigned the largest point, while the lighter squares became smaller. The very lightest squares may have no point in them at all. As you can see, the more varied the number of points you have, the more detailed your final image will be. This one only shows the use of four points. You may elect to use five, six, or more. The choice is yours. This is where being creative comes in. Here is an example that I showed them at the time. Using a photo of a model, I indicated that what I wanted them to do was to place the image inside of the square format as indicated above. The next step was to place a piece of tracing paper over the image and draw out a grid. As you can see, their grid can be as fine as you might want. If your original image is 12 by 12, then the very coarsest grid would be based on the quarter inch. 12 squares across representing the 12 inches and then subdividing that into quarters would result in a grid that was 48 by 48. This is pretty easy to do using two triangles. I'll also add a video showing you how this is done. Now, you can make this grid as fine as you might like. Subdivide it into eighths instead and you will end up with a grid that is twice this fine or 96 by 96 squares. As you can see by this image, the grid needs to be fine enough to capture the subtlety of the shading in the background picture. Then the task is assigning the various size points, largest to smallest, to the individual areas of the photograph controlled by the grid. Obviously, we will be using much finer points than half inch, one inch, and so on. Here's the tracing paper sketch, a little less than a quarter of the way finished. I'm using a black fine line marker and my circle template to control the size of my circles. Notice how these points on the left side of the image are predominantly the largest ones due to the fact that the area of the photo that is the darkest. And here is the sketch when completed. The design is difficult to appreciate entirely due to the fact that the photograph is still under the tracing paper. It becomes more striking when the image is removed. This is the design with the photograph removed. The final step is to create a vector-based version of this and remove both the background photo and the grid lines. Using what you have learned from the process of doing the rough, you can now reinterpret your image using the more precise elements in the vector program. That is the second part of this assignment.